the edges off. As soon as it, as soon as it uh, starts uh, getting round, I'll turn the speed off. So you don't want to go too deep because then you're going into the hollow and you're going to end up with a little small cup and a bracelet. <laughs> so I'm looking down here and it should be just about to the size of my, uh, the outer side diameter of my uh, chuck. I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit because it's moving just a hair. That's the bad thing about fur. It's a uh, pretty uh, open grain wood. If you get a chance, I usually make them out of maple or other things. Well, it should be all right. We'll just take our time here. to really start to crack a little bit. <coughs> and we're just going to come down.
more speed, more heat. I learned the hard way when I first started doing this. I used to just grab the wire with my bare hands. Then I got smart and put handles on it. After I had went in the house and got band-aids for all the burn. Uh, I just started doing this because it, some of the kids were saying that uh, they would, they would get slippery when they were outside in the summer and it would just slip out of their hands. You know, it only takes a second and it's just uh, another thing that people think is pretty neat when they're buying them. I, uh, I get 10 bucks for these things at Crack Bears and uh, I've done about 70 of them. So uh, I try when I go to Crack Bears. I do my bowl and my segmented turnings and stuff like this. But I find that uh, some of these craft bears, usually it's a family get-together, so it's the husband and wife and their kids. So I put all these toys up front, and I'll be sitting there, you know, playing with one of these things, and the kids will come running over and gather around, and of course their parents have to follow them. So, uh, they, uh, you know, I uh, work this thing out that, you know, yeah, well, I'll give you one if your mom buys a nice bowl. Uh, you know, you got to do this. Next, we're going to do a little sanding. Uh, just to smooth out some of the stuff. I like these little pads that they just stick on. Another thing is that it doesn't burn the fingers. I'm not going to do too much sanding because I don't want Neil to call me up and say this goddamn sawdust all over the place. And that's just the uh, aid grip, but now it's pretty smooth, so... Hey, Fred, do you make those sanding paddles, or do you buy them somewhere? These here? Your paddles, yeah. Yeah, I get them at uh, Packard. They really are. I, 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 another thing, you know, you learn over a period of time. It's just so much easier to use, especially inside bowls, you know, the small ones. So that's what we ended up with. What you would do next is drill a hole right through the bottom, you measure down one inch and a half, and you would tie your string on. But before we can do that, you have all this outside nice and sanded, nice and smooth, and inside you get all these problems where the chuck has bit into the wood and is really very, very rough. Easy way to sand that, put this in this way. Handy dandy sander. Piece of dowel with a curved cut in the bandsaw. Take a piece of sandpaper. Now it's spinning this way towards me, so you wrap your paper the same way. Put it in there. And in nothing flat. This is great for vases and things like that. Remember I get down there? And we got one little piece right here. And it's smooth. So you see how easy things are to do if you sit around the shop like I do and just daydream. So anyhow, there's the cup with the hole. You would take a string and Hook it onto the wooden ball that you have, and what you will end up with is one like this. Now, I didn't cut grooves on this. The object is to flip it up and catch it. And 
and I'll tell you it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> and another sidebar to this. There we go. Uh, first, time, first time I did this, I saw it in an old magazine, I think it was Papa Mechanics or something, I just happened to find it. Um, I made this bunch of them, and I came in the house that evening, and my wife says, what happened to you out there? And I said, what do you mean? She says, your forehead. And it had three little, and I, first time I did it, I was going, <laughs> so, all right, so uh, that's a lesson learned. So do you drill a hole in the ball yourself? Did you turn the balls? I didn't turn it, but I did drill, drill the hole. What's your secret to drill the hole straight through the ball? Okay, very easy. Very easy. I'm glad you asked that. That's a good point. Okay, this is an inch and a half diameter. Take a piece of two by four scrap laying around the shop. Put it down on my drill press table, clamp it down, and I took a one inch, uh, no, an inch and a quarter portion of it. And I drilled down through it, okay? Now I've got an inch and a quarter hole in this piece of two by four. Take the portion of it off. This side is a bit, drill bit, put it in, you set this down in that hole and it doesn't move around because it's almost completely, and, and it's already centered because you haven't changed anything. You just drill a whole bunch of them. So it's a real quick way of, real quick way of doing it. Alright, oh now, to finish this, I'm going to talk about finishing on each one real quick. Um, Um, at the very beginning, I centered, this is a two, uh, three, four inch down. I have a centering jig. I, I think I showed some of you last time. This is what they call a centering jig for dowels. And it's got all these holes, all different sizes. This is a three quarter. You put it in there, like that. I've got my hands full here. And you usually take a hammer, but I don't have one, so. And you just go... Perfectly centered in the dowel every time. No ifs, ands, or buts. But what I like to do is I like to drill it so that I can. I'm going to finish this thing and I would drill this hole out a little bit so that I can take these are called timber screws and I just put it in here. See if I did this. Where's one of this, Nate? I don't know where. It's in the box here for the Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, okay. So here's the one we just did. I take this timber screw, put it down here. Just get it going a little bit. Just so it's tight. Now, when I make things, I make usually multiples of 10, 20. And the reason for that is um, you set up a drill press to drill one, you might as well drill 10 of them. You're going to cut, cut 10 of them. Okay, and, and like I said, I saw a lot of these. So I have got this all ready to be finished, and I just take my can of um, Helmsman polyurethane gloss. I have a 20 by 20 inch fan. I put one of those cheap um, green filters, furnace filters on. And I put this in front, turn the fan on so it's sucking the air away from you, not blowing at you. Okay? And you just go, pss, 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 pss. Okay? All the fumes go into the fan, all the overspray goes into the filter. And then I just take this, this is just quick. And hang it up. And I go to the next one. So, ten of them, you can spray them, you know, after you get them all done and all sanded, and then you just put these on there. Ten minutes, you'll have ten of them sprayed and hung up. Next morning, you come out, take it down, spray the second coat, and they're done. Okay? Very easy. All right. Like I'm doing my hair here. Okay. <laughs> this is my hair. <laughs> All right. Next thing. Uh, seeing how we still have.
of the chuck iron. This is a chuck thing. And I think you might find it interesting. And I sold a lot of these too. It's a Christmas decoration. It's got a little green tree in the center. Can you see it there? Or I'll try not to move it. But um, very, very popular around Christmas time. And people hanging around the trees and you know. I had a lady uh, last November, just before Christmas, she bought 15 of them. And I said, gee, you got to put them in a tree? She said, no, I'm going to put one on each one of the doorknobs in my closet, in my bedroom, in my front door, in my kitchen door. <laughs> so she just had them all hanging. I'm like, oh, well, I don't care as long as you're paying $7.50 a piece. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Man. <laughs> so this is what we're going to make. And I gotta find all my stuff here. Now, it's not hard, but you have to have accuracy. And when you're drawing these holes in this block, this is what you start off with. These are the supplies that you need to start with. A piece of wood. This is maybe two by two. As long as it's square, and as long as it's the same height as thickness, okay? Because when you're drilling these holes, you have to set it up so that these holes are perfectly in the center, perfectly in the center, perfectly in the center, perfectly in the center. If not, when we start turning it, what will happen is it isn't perfectly. Now this one here, okay, you see this, this face here? It's kind of wide, but this face here is kind of thin. And that is because we weren't centered. So essentially what we were doing is turning it off center, and half of it's going to be thin and half of it will be thick. But we're going to find out on this one. So usually what I do is I do the very first part, and I'll do it right now to show you. The very first part is the long piece, and this is the Christmas tree. And it only takes a second. Don't worry about clamping down on it hard because we are going to be turning that down at the bottom. And so we have to make the Christmas tree first before you can do anything else. So that tree has to get put inside the rest of it. And I need one more tool here. Really quick. It's just a parting tool. I'm going to say this is where my base of my tool is. Base of my tree. Down here. Put this part 
put in your chuck, tighten it down, sort of. You bring up your tail stock into the center that you uh, in center it. And that's how I would glue it so that just for about three minutes, so I know it's all in the same plane. Because it's here again, it's important. Bluetooth mic, but we're waiting for a uh, from a 3.5 millimeter uh, stereo plug to a what are they called a four something adapter four four yeah quarter inch adapter that's <laughs> okay real quick we're gonna turn it down. Starting the the cage.
So do my rough sanding. I think we'll just go right to like a 120.
take these. These are skewers. You can buy them 50 for a dollar at the dollar store. Usually what I would do is take my hand drill and drill this hole in the top, wedge this in, so now I have something that would hold this part right here. And I'll get to the other one again, and I'll just quickly show you why it's important. Now, it's important for finishing, so you don't get finishing all over your hands. And this would just going like this, and you hold it in front of your hand, you just go, you're all done, and then you would come over and get this, and I have four or five of these, and they all have holes in them, and uh, you would just stick this down in there, and you move on to your next one. Now what I do is I have one cabinet. It's about this wide, about this high, plastic, but I think it was $50, $60 at cabinets plus. That cabinet is just for finishing, okay? I clean it out real good every week, and what I'll do is I turn all these things, but I won't finish them in the afternoon because I've been turning all day, and there's dust in your shop. So I turn on a dust collector, so um, it's a recycler, and then I come out in the morning, place is spotless. And I, I clean and wipe down all these, spray all of them, and then I put them all in the cabinet and then start my day turning. And next morning I come out and there's not a speck of dust down, just spray them again, you're done. So, these things come real handy. Now, the next one I'm going to show you, we're going to do the uh, top. Let me know if you guys are getting bored. Um, and the same thing, for finishing, I'm going to show you a little trick on finishing the top. And then if we have time, we will do um, the kaleidoscope next, so I'm going to take a few minutes. Alright, this turning is what they call manual turning. Everybody turns pens, all that stuff on the lathe. This is what a manual is. This is how I got started a number of years back. And I turned pens and bracelet holders and uh, wine bottle stoppers and what have you so that it would pay for me to get a bigger lathe. <laughs> and then I made bigger stuff until I got enough money to get a bigger lathe. You about ready to buy a bigger lathe? I would like to. Then I have... I like my Nova. Where's that button again? So we're going to take the chuck off because we don't need this. Where is our 
knockout tool. There's a knockout tool. It's in the toolbox. Oh, it is? Yep. Oh, crap. I'll get it if you want me to. Well, I, I don't have... I've got to knock out this... Uh, I think it's in here. This won't, will this uh, come out by turning it all the way back? Yes, never mind, Dave. I just remember the last minute. This is one of those fancy ones. Um, a lot of manuals. I don't know. Anybody turning pens on a manual? Yeah. yeah. Some of the manuals have a thread on the end, and then you got to tighten the little thing. Well, this is, look around, but it's, uh, I forget where I got it because either Penn State or Patrick. This just slides right up and tightens, so you don't have to do any of that nuts and bolts and stuff. So you just bring it up, tighten down, and you're ready to go. Back, back question: While you're turning that, <coughs> you talked about some of these others. You know, you got 50 cents and whatever. Everything oh. I've seen you turn so far. Basically, it's scrap wood, right? All so scrap. Just yep. we go dumpster, dumpster diving. Oh yeah. After this, we we kind of go right? You got that right. And I'll tell you the truth. Uh, if you want to take a look right behind me, in the back there, they usually have a big bin and you know, all those cutoffs. Yeah. And I sometimes come over to see me and I be shooting the breeze and say, "Yeah, I need to buy some stuff." I said, "But I also I want to do some turning stuff and go back to cutoffs." I've gotten some nice stuff out of here. <laughs> and, yeah, okay. Paul will do it too, uh, over at Hardwoods. Alright, anyhow, I have a piece of oak, actually, two pieces glued together, because it's straight grain, and I glued it up so the grain runs the same way on both, plate, uh, both pieces. And what we're going to do is slowly, slow speed, You'll notice I did, it's not square. I take the extra time on the chop saw and just cut the corners off because if it's square, a lot of times when you first go in with your tool, it will catch the first corner and it will splinter. And then all of a sudden you stop and then you'll get the tweezers and you're cooking splinters out of your damn hands. Sometimes when I'm doing oak, I wear gloves. So, yeah, six one half to the nail, although I know they say you shouldn't be wearing gloves. I even should be wearing long sleeve shirt, but hey, who's watching? <laughs> All right, we'll go back to our uh, round of favorite, and I'm going to put a oh, quick bit dull. Smooth. 
far as any resistance to spinning it. Come around. 
learn Seattle. Now this next thing I'm going to show you, I don't know what our time limit is here. It's only going to take a few minutes. Go for it. Okay. And uh, find all my stuff. I think it should be easy because it's the last one. All right. We're going to do this one, believe it or not, a lot of adults are buying. Some people say it reminds me of the 60s, far out, you know. I go, okay, what were you smoking? <laughs> a lot of sales in Colorado. <laughs> this is what we need to make the next thing. Piece of scrap, okay? And you drill a hole perfectly down the center. Not so much on this one because we're going to make it round and it's just straight down. So we drill a hole and then we have another mandrel that we have to put on. I can't get that one off. But anyhow, there's the hole. These are the mandrels, and it's very important that this length is uh, 2 and 3 sixteenths, and it has to be 2 and 3 sixteenths exactly, otherwise the next part isn't going to work. And we'll put this mandrel on here, oh and I did forget to tell you about my, um, Remember I told you about this top that we just turned? Uh, what we want to do is, real quick, i got to take time out. I turned 10 of them, or 20 of them at a time. And same thing, I got now i got to get them all, have um, polish on them, or spray uh, there. <laughs> so, I have all these two by the little dowels. Take it down, tap it, put it on this. And this time, spray it. Take it off, put it in the holder. Take the next one, put it on here. Take it off, 20 of them in 10 minutes, okay? Then you take the things, put it in the clean cabinet. Take them out next morning, do the next coat, and you're all done. Alright, um, so anyhow, back to this. The kaleidoscope. Rick, do you use the high friction polish on those while you're turning them? No, um, actually, what I'm doing on these um, is just, you know, sandpaper, and then just taking them straight over, and spraying them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on some things, depending on the wood, Sometimes I might spray one coat of shellac first. And the best thing about it is, too, you know, people that are spraying stuff, you know, and sometimes if you're spraying this, let's say you're spraying it, and you, you're not turning it like this, well, you're going to have high spot, low spot, high spot, low spot. And the easy way to get rid of that is just going like this. And, and it all just settles completely out. And it, I'll tell you, well, where is it? Ready? And it was just, you know, they sprayed that way. And it, it's very nice, you know, for what you're doing. Okay. Let's get this thing turned down. And we can all go home. Or go someplace. <laughs>
Now this is for a kaleidoscope, but while I'm doing this, you can also see the shape somewhat. It almost looks like an oak wine barrel. And I did some bottle stoppers, and it was a little bit fatter, and uh, they looked exactly like a, a wine, what they used to throw wine in. And uh, I was at a band at the firehouse selling stuff, and the guy walked up and he says, I really like those. And I says, oh, great. And he says, can you do more? And I says, yeah. And he says, can you do me a hundred? <laughs> I said, excuse me? And uh, he says, yeah. He said, I want a hundred of them. And I said, well, you know, they're 12 bucks a piece. And I said, well, what are you going to do? He says, I'm leaning over wine cellars. Uh, okay. Took them down the store. And I, I, he's probably selling them for 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll tell you what the hell. Okay, anyhow, I would uh, finish this. And I, this is all it is, and I would finish it. And this is the finished one. Here's the kaleidoscope. I'll show you how it works.